This is the Well-Meaning Skeptic Podcast. I'm your host, Conrad Kosky. Today, cynicism. Cynicism with a capital C. I decided to, um, last time I laid, laid down, I lied down on my bed. And I thought, I've done this a few times now, and it drains all the energy out of me. So, even though I think it kind of creates a bit more relaxed, uh, ambiance, ambiantic kind of feel. I'm going to, now I'm sitting beside my bed with one elbow leaning on. So we'll see well, if maybe force me to have to, you know, um, find some more energy to uh, bring into the this one. Um, so yeah, cynicism. Uh, cynicism, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna, well, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll try to, uh, talk about how I, I, the word is interesting to me because, um, you know, the way I grew up, uh, thinking it was kind of the, the general way it's used, right? It's like, um, oh, don't be so cynical. You're such a cynic. You're so cynical. It's just kind of always thinking negatively, pessimistically, even, uh, about people and events and all this kind of stuff. And... But then as I, as I uh, explored more of um, philosophy and Greek uh, philosophy in general, and then came across the school of the c- cynics, um, the thought of the cynics, um, which is where the word originally came from. And the word uh, even then originally came from the Greek, I guess it meant dog or like a dog, which is cool. Um, I like epi- ep- epistemology, epistemology something like that you know the one to find out where words come from what they mean you know the one i mean um but anyway um yeah i really connected with it really connected with the school of thought that is cynicism um because it really originally it was more um you know like uh some of the well classic they all all the things seem like all very cool people too that's kind of it diogenes the guy with with, uh, uh just kind of that Alexander the Great, uh, the only man that Alexander can imagine being besides himself was Diogenes. That's pretty impressive. And Diogenes did not give two shits about Alexander the Great. Very cool. Seemed like a very interesting guy. I liked his mockery of. So really, the cynicism back in the back in the day, in the old in the classical days, uh, vintage Greece, was that if you were a cynic, it was again like living very bare bones, minimalistic. Um, like a dog you don't need much you can live in a bowl or a hut or a small you know domicile of some kind and maybe not all cynics did this but at least diogenes would also as part of his philosophy um excuse me sorry i i got the i downed a bunch of coconut almonds before starting to record and uh surprisingly salty and they're kind of still somewhere in my throat but uh i thought i thought i could wash them away i can never fully wash anything away that's what i learned from the almonds um but diogenes would also maybe he's just kookier and grumpier than other cynics or people in general but he would also take on a role of the 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 mocker the one that would shine a light a reflection on society and its flaws and its things that people just took for granted which i really really appreciated i like that a lot really was driven or uh, was attracted to that um and uh there's some other things like crates and his i suppose wife hipparchia they seem cool so you know there were there were even couples that were doing the living in bathtubs and shitting on the i don't know where they shat but diogenes would just like shit everywhere i guess throw his shit at people <laughs> um but um, anyway, I like the general theme of living with l- little. You don't need that much, and then that then allows you l- much more time to reflect and to consider how best to um, live and ha- structure uh, institutions and society. And um, yeah, I like that. And I wonder if how cynicism now became to mean what it does mean is you know maybe people that were more um of the establishment of the established order that they saw cynics and they were like 
these people are just they just constantly complaining and trying to find fault with good citizens citizenry the citizenry that are all they're just trying to do they're just trying to go about doing what they should being a good you know person of the society and uh, here's these people constantly trying to find fault and then try to undermine it and everything so I think that's where they're like the, to the to those people there see the cynics as people that just were always very negative and pessimistic and always thinking that people were shallow and phony and all this kind of stuff um, and kind of you can you know looking at the 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 worst parts of human nature which maybe some of it is not necessarily untrue but it's more like I think you could be a cynic and still actually be quite happy and optimistic and positive but uh, it's still more just about kind of um, extracting yourself from uh, you know uh, living on the fringe a little bit and kind of looking in on how uh, things are done and so you're not necessarily taking all these traditions and beliefs for granted necessarily um, and yeah I could relate a lot to that um, and uh, and I mean maybe there's there is a case for the modern use of cynicism too I suppose I um, you know people that aren't cynic <laughs> cynical at all you do wonder um, those are the people that I guess can't handle any any negativity that gets in. Uh, we'll just open the floodgates to their their lives that they are not ready to uh, not ready to let in, not ready to let their lives in to their mind or let their mind into their lives. Um, but yeah, I, I like I like all the when I got into I like all the classic schools of stoicism, cynicism, skepticism. Mm -hmm. Um, Epicureanism is also very cool. I like. I think you can you can take a good a good buffet's worth of all of them, and you can, you know, in a lot of ways they're all kind of saying the same thing: live within your means, moderately, virtuously, and uh, yeah, work on yourself and always consider how you are. Um, consider yeah, like think about yourself as a as an individual, but also think about how. What are you doing in life to better yourself and other people? And it's pretty simple stuff. That's the thing. Like, you know, self-help craze today. You could just just learn about the Stoics, the Cynics, uh, maybe some Plato and Aristotle and Socrates. Uh, maybe not Aristotle. Well, he's got some stuff, I guess. I find in the quotes when you get those like ancient Greek quotes, quote uh, things on Instagram or whatever. Aristotle's quotes are always so wordy and they kind of I don't know I don't really like them as much you know I like Epictetes or Epictetes as I'm sh sure someone has said um or you know Zeno or Seneca uh you know but uh yeah Aristotle I don't think he was good to quote you know um but yeah also, apparently, I heard, found recently that uh, Aristotle's works that have survived were actually just like his notes that weren't published, so they're in rough form. Which maybe it makes sense why they're really hard to to quote, and they're all in like long form because they were just they were never published, um, edited works. They were just his notes. So, uh, gotta make some give him some credit there or some uh, slack there, I guess. But anyway, anywho, yeah, just like check out Socrates. Stoics, Epicureans, cynics, skeptics, and then you can basically you can skip all the all the self help stuff and just kind of I don't know I think I think you do whatever the fuck you want to do, but I think that's done me a lot a lot more good, you know, and a lot of them write pretty plainly I find actually I think you know depends on the translation I guess that you get. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I find, like, it really, I don't know. I think it's really important today, too. Like, if everyone was a little more cynical in the Diogenesian sense, um, I think we'd be in a good place. Because, actually, again, I also think, what was it? 
watched a thing on Diogenes recently, and I think he actually came from a fairly wealthy background, I think, which is interesting because he's completely rejected that whole thing. And I think that's the that's probably why he's so interesting and um, important because, yeah, because, you know, no one can really escape the system. I think the system is still the hardest on the 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 working poor and then the impoverished and everything and, and definitely obviously it's still better to be rich than poor in this system but um everyone still struggles regardless of how high up the um the pyramid or whatever you're at um everyone still feels the need to constantly be working and keep track of how they're doing in comparison to the people that are in their specific race you know if you are middle class you're going to be like you're doing hurdles or or the dash you know they're doing um track and field you're going to be worrying about the people that are doing the same run as you are it's a 100 meter dash you're going to be worried about the other people doing the 100 meter dash doing the 200 meter dash mm, you get the idea um same thing with like oh if you're in this community or class you're going to be concerned with other people in that same situation not so much other people maybe a little bit but not so much um but then yeah that traps everyone even people that you know probably got enough of an education to know the rat race is bull and the joneses are shitty people that you don't even you shouldn't even need to care what the joneses need to care about keeping up with the joneses because they're probably they are the epitome of the most boring shallow people you know and um you probably have a real clash of like fashion you go into their house and it's just a mishmash of you know because the joneses they're so they're always so up to date that they don't even know what weighs up anymore, you know. Them Joneses, um, but uh, but yeah, everyone has their Jones, their Joneses, you know, that they are needing to keep up with, and it's wild. So everyone, even people, you know, a lot of people go to university and they learn about the system and the rat race, and it's kind of there in front of you. But they still feel the need to engage and to worry about their p particular Joneses. And um, it's wild, I think. Like, So it shows that it is possible. Diogenes shows us that it is possible for even people of means to free themselves from the need to have all the means. But, um, you know. Um, but yeah, I think we gotta... So there's hope, but gotta get there because, you know... A big part of why I think the system hasn't been is because everyone, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, no, we should definitely do something. We should do something. We should do something right now. Now is the time. No better time than the present to do something about like climate change, overconsumption, pollution, overpopulation, possibly aliens. I don't know. Um, we should do something. We should do something about it right now. But then everyone just gets lost back in their worrying about their particular Joneses, and um, you know, it seems. Everyone in any particular community, for whatever reason, can ca get knocked out of, be freed from the worry of the Jones. Um, but it's kind of random, and it kind of happens differently for everybody. So th there is no antidote. There's no one antidote or, uh, you know, vaccine, as it were. Um, yeah, but I, I don't... So I have hope, but it's... it's uh, you know, I do wonder... I don't know. You know, like, I feel like, again, it's, I feel like it's easy for me because I was already kind of, I was living like Diogenes without the, when he made that decision, when he was old and decided to live like a dog, you know? Um, I was already kind of in that, sort of, you know? There was no pressure to not live that way, or very little pressure. Um, so I can't imagine, you know, I just watched a thing about uh, Instagram influencers and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I still, I think I judge and blame far less than I used to. You know, sometimes I watch a documentary and you just, even though you're curious to watch and learn about this person's life, you still kind of judge them the whole way through. Now, I usually end up judging someone sometimes for like 10 seconds. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? What they're doing is actually pretty cool, and they're probably a pretty decent person. And, like, you know, it's not really my thing, but I'm happy they're doing it anyway, and I'm happy that they're happy, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it still happens, but 
you know um anyway the the influencer one i think and some people i guess you know i because i because i didn't grow up around people that gave a shit about fashion followers and instagram and all that stuff so it just seems so otherworldly i'm like why don't you just clearly it seems like you're not happy with how the beauty industry oppresses people and pigeonholes them and kind of fucks them up so just leave but they it's not so easy because their whole world they still love it i guess they just love the idea of it um they just wish it was different which i guess is fair because it's like when someone gets that their country is in a bad spot they don't most people don't just leave it that's why the whole thing with refugees is like that is people's last resort it's not like people become refugees for fun no one would do that most people are happy to live more or less uh home can be anything home is anything that you first are born into so um where was i going to be sad um but yeah so that's why which is good in a way because it means that not everyone's going to abandon don't want to pick on russia but russia uh no one's not everyone's going to abandon russia just because it's super corrupt and all that kind of stuff it's good that people are like no i know it's super corrupt and sketchy but it's my home i love it i want to change it so it's good that people are like that but it also means that people i guess sometimes just stick with what other, whatever nor- situation they are acclimatized to and normalized and, you know. So I don't know, good and bad. I was thinking about that earlier today too, how, you know, well, no point feeling envy, really, with anybody. I think that's the thing. You hear, you shouldn't feel envy to be happy. People are like, okay, I get that, I get that, I get that, but it's really hard because I, come on, I'm human, I, yeah, I'm going to feel envy. But, but oh, I think you shouldn't or work towards and I don't have to worry about it so much is that you know even someone who seems like they got a really good thing going on there's always pros and cons if you're really famous you're a famous influencer well then you're gonna feel like you always have to look hot and made up all the time and that's super shitty I would hate that and I think everyone would hate that even if you love attention a lot more you're an attention seeking butterfly of socializing and all that kind of stuff I think everyone still hates the idea of never being able to walk around and slacks and uh bulky bridge britches you know um sometimes now and then just to let loose and um and then yeah and then also even that stuff never lasts either so even if it's a really more or less a good situation that situation won't last you know you become unfamous or or maybe not unfamous as dave Chappelle says you never become unfamous you become infamous but not unfamous but anyway become infamous or you lose your reputation all this kind of stuff becomes a bad reputation um but then it, with that then some good things still come out of that it's like oh i'm finally at least released from having to go to all these events and all these signings and all these rabid rabid fans and you know so even if your situation ends up becoming worse and then you're like oh it's really shitty my life took a turn for the shit you know, in a lot of ways, it probably actually improved, if you look at it, you know, um, so yeah, yeah, nothing ever lasts, the bad shit never lasts, and even when it is lasting, currently, there's still good shit in the bad shit, and then the good shit never lasts, um, but that's okay, because there was bad shit with the good shit that you will then not have to worry about when your good shit stops lasting, so, you know, you know what I mean, I'm sure it could be said better could also be said worse too um i think that kind of makes sense now i think this is working i think sitting does give me more energy although i'm slowly starting to rest my head oh, on the end of the bed i need to keep myself awake snap out of it i've only seen moonstruck once kind of weird i feel like for such a cinephile bloody cinephile I think I would have seen Moonstruck more than once. I don't know. I used to watch movies. Rewatch movies so much more. I don't know why I... I'm at least back into movies, which is cool. Um, There's a new movie with Josh Rubin from College Humor fame. He is in a movie, and that's super exciting, super happy for him, because I think he's super talented. No, he is, though. I, I don't mean to put on the... He's, he's just... Uh, inspiration. Inspiration for me growing up. And it's it's coming it's coming paying dividends, so that's I should check that out. But yeah, 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 yeah. good time to re- start rewatching movies too, considering movies are kind of a 
Got a bit of a slow, slow, uh, slow plane right now. So, yeah. Hmm. But yeah. But then it's also you know cynicism. I like how it tells you to live like a good cynic. Is about impo It's pretty impossible, especially nowadays. Same thing with being a perfect stoic. You can't really do it. It's not achievable, and that's probably a good thing. Because if you actually achieved it, then you'd be bored. So, it's like achieving full enlightenment. Buddha was probably, like, super bored with life afterwards. Or maybe he didn't even achieve full enlightenment. I don't remember if he did or not. I don't remember. Maybe he said he did, but maybe he was lying. Buddha. Lying. Fucker. <laughs> uh, no. Mm -mm. You don't lie when you're enlightened. Depends on the enlightenment, I guess. Depends where you go to school for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can never be. Uh, you hear about, yeah, Stoic sages. I guess there's probably a cynic equivalent. And there's the skeptics, the, the ultimate skeptics, right? The one guy what was it? Uh, so skept, so skeptical. He was so skeptical that he was even skeptical of like, what was it? People had to stop him from like walking off cliffs or like walking into big holes or running into like people or something so he'd be like well i don't know i can't be sure that that's not just a figment of my imagination or that my eyes are playing tricks on me or whatever you know now that might have been exaggerated but if it wasn't yeah that is super skeptical but you wouldn't you wouldn't last too long being that skeptical because i think you know even the the most committed skeptics kind of get like well even if i can't believe anything i see I'm going to roll with it because it seems to be keeping me alive to not make avoid making contact with fast moving objects, you know. Um so, yeah. It's good to and again, you don't want to be too extreme in that. Even a good thing, too much of a good thing is not a good thing. So, uh be skeptical, but not too skeptical. Be cynical, but not too cynical. Be stoic, but not too stoic. Um, Epicurean. I know there was more to that one, too. A lot of it was, like, pleasure and moderation, too. But Can you be too Epicurean? Can you be too moderate? Can you be too controlled in your appetites and your lusts? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's the only one you can be you're allowed to be you can be very epic too you can be too epicurean and you can still function maybe that's the only one that you can do the thing um yeah hmm hmm <laughs> yeah but i like that though i really do like that though when i finally came across that that branch of philosophy it was great because i was like you can go more in depth from there, but really, that's like that's the stuff. When I heard about philosophy before really getting into it, I was like, yeah, they're basically just you know people sitting around thinking about how to live and what is life and what is it, you know. And that kind of more or less does it. At least kind of gives a good kind of blueprint to kind of try to you know guidelines more than actual rules, but it's still something, um, you know. Um, yeah, of course, I feel like once you get into all that stuff, you just keep going down more and more with that rabbit and their hole because it's so cool and fun to think about that you want more and you'll never be satiated. You'll just keep absorbing, digesting, eating more philosophy, more philosophy. And then when you don't get any more, then you get angry and uh, scary and become a monster of your former self. And which means that you learned nothing from all the world's philosophy that you previously digested. You're a bad philosopher. You're not paying attention to what the stuff you're actually consuming, clearly, you know. You're a monster, a philosophical monster that's not paying attention to things. You know, you can't just watch a video and not pay attention. Why are, are you doing it then? I mean, you could pay attention and then you'll still forget it in a few months and then have to like rewatch it or, or just, you know, know that you learned it 
a lot of life is knowing that you learn something and kind of still vaguely remember enough to be like, yeah, I don't need to check up on that again. But really, you should because you've forgotten almost completely, fully, almost fully, completely um, all of it. You know, so it's good to refresh. I refresh things all the time and I still don't remember. So it's good to just, yeah, keep refreshing. Refresh every topic once a day, every day of your life. And it'll serve you well. That's my life advice. Um, otherwise, you'll become a monster. A goblin of your former self. Oh. I just got my laptop resting on my on my, my bed. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, hmm, yeah. Oh, it's raining out. I've never been one, I think, to be too affected by seasonal depression, but maybe this year is my year. I don't know. Along with other things. Um, what else could I do with updates? 39, was it 39 million people have got COVID now? That's pretty wild. Who'd have thought we'd get here, eh? Shit. Another update? Um, still haven't paid for a charge on the electric. That's exciting. I, well, every five, half a dozen episodes, I'll say this again, I suppose. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to think about. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Working on our... I do need to trick my brain into doing little cleanups more. I at least understand how flawed my brain is and procrastinating and stuff. So I do, I've got a good handle on tricking my brain in some things. Like, you know, if I really want a s- delicious, juicy looking video popped up on my f- YouTube subscriptions and I just, I want it. I want to, I want to watch it. I want to watch it so much. And then, so I'll be like, okay, well, you got to like, you know, do a little exercise first. You got to. I don't know, do a sweep first or clean it, pick up a couple things, throw out the garbage or something. Do something first, you know, pay some bills. I paid uh, the phone bill and the hydro today. Do something like that, and then you can watch that juicy ass video, you know. That stuff usually works, but uh, I still find I have to do something. I think I, it's not working for, I don't know, certain cleanups. Like uh, rearranging things or just organizing things better. Need to find. I just need to find juicier videos that'll encourage me to do the rest of the keeping up on my humanly duties, you know. But uh, oh well. I mean, there's no such thing as. And then things just get dirty again. We shed so much hair and skin and and mucus and and uh, and then just seeps into the living space and then we clean it we have people over and we're like hey you might be surprised to hear this but i'm the one person that does not seep um gross shit constantly I'm like wow that's really and then they leave and then i just let all my gross um humanly uh you know all the flesh and everything just kind of seep out I'm like, Whew, couldn't hold that in another minute thank god they're gone you know, when I was younger, I used to love just, I don't think I, I, th- I don't think I overstayed welcomes too much, but I did love hanging out in late hours. And then, you know, you get older and people are just like, you know what? Just like very abruptly, like, all right, we're leaving now. And I was always, a, at first I'd be like, oh, that seems a bit rude or it seems a bit, wow, okay. You having a bad time? I don't know. They might not be having a bad time, but they're just like, I, it's just enough for me, you know? You get to know your limit. You play within it. Most people by now are good with playing within their their limits. Unless they're gamblers at uh, the Carlton Ottawa Raceway. And then they're probably not good at knowing their limit and playing within it. But um, Ottawa Carlton Raceway. Um, but, you know, generally people are knowing their limit of socializing. And they play within that. You know, that's, that's, r- that's, that's becoming... A f- fully fledgling person, you know. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. 
What boxers do I have on today? Oh, Ottawa Senators. It's been a while since I've seen a Sens game. And I don't miss it. I'm sure I'll see another one someday. I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'll go and maybe grab a, a beer. Probably a Canadian because you have two choices at hockey games. I'll go for the not light beer and uh, have a $10 pizza slice and, uh, yeah, watch a game and, and wait for the crabs to disperse and go home. And yeah, I'll probably do that again someday. Wow, I'm uh, not making it sound like I enjoy myself. It's okay. It's a good time. It's a time. Life is a time. Time is life. There's a lot of time in life if you know how to time it. Um... Anyway, this has been the well-meaning skeptic podcast. Uh, this has been the the one about uh, rough, you know, kind of started off talking about cynicism. Anyway, that's my thoughts on some of that stuff. And uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, that's that's been it. This has been it. So, bye. See ya. Go away.